Well, folks, it seems that there is some disagreement between the American government and the Israeli government over what needs to happen in Gaza after Hamas is gone. And that is predicated on this bizarre notion that the Palestinian Arabs in both the Gaza Strip and Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, that they are liberty-loving moderates who are just like you in the way that they believe, as opposed to they really, really, really don't want Israel to exist. The bottom line is that what happens next in the Gaza Strip, which has become an area of contention between the Israelis and the, and the Americans, that relies on what you think the Gaza Strip is, meaning who do you think is going to pick up the pieces over there? Now, Israel has tried to hand it to Egypt. Egypt doesn't want any piece of it. Why, why do you think Egypt doesn't want control of the Gaza Strip and neither does Israel? Why do you think that is? Is it because they all hate that six miles of beachfront territory on the Mediterranean? It's actually pretty nice territory right on the Mediterranean. It's like a coastline, same coastline as Tel Aviv. Why exactly does no one want this? The answer is you have 2 million people living there who are so radicalized that Egypt is deeply afraid that if it takes in that group of people, that they are going to have a terror threat on their northern border since ISIS is already occupying large portions of the Sinai Desert, which is Egyptian territory. It's the same reason why Israel has tried to hand over control of Palestinian Arab territories, of Palestinian Arab populated areas in Judea and Samaria to Jordan. And Jordan's like, no, no way, man. We have no interest in 3 million Palestinian Arabs living in this area because they're afraid that it's going to overthrow the Hashemite dynasty. That's the irony of watching Queen Rania of Jordan, who is Palestinian Arab by extraction, talking about how much solidarity she has with Palestinians. Um, if you did, you would resign your position and the Hashemite dynasty would be overthrown. But you're enjoying your five-star hotels and your extremely luxurious lifestyle while people in your country are living on $4,100 a year. And the reason you're not leaving is because your population in Jordan is a pretty extreme population. And it'll get more extreme if you were to take in, even including territory, three million Palestinian Arabs who hate Jews with a, with a burning passion. By polling data, that's what the polls suggest. The, the, there is no evidence. I'm, I'm still awaiting the evidence that Palestinian Arabs in Judea and Samaria, Palestinian Arabs in the Gaza Strip, overwhelmingly, in the absence of their current leadership, are Jew-loving, peace-loving people. Like what? That doesn't mean, again, that they're legitimate military targets. Nobody's talking about that. What we're talking about is who gets to govern in these areas. One of the assumptions in 2005, when Israel pulled out of the Gaza Strip, is that there would then be elections. Those elections were overseen and greenlit by the United States. Condoleezza Rice said that the, she was then the Secretary of State, that the the election that was held in the Gaza Strip was legitimate. Who got elected? Hamas. Hamas then proceeded to kill everybody in the Palestinian Authority. But if there were an election held today, the reason Mahmoud Abbas has not held an election in Judea and Samaria is that he's afraid. He hasn't held an election since 2008, by the way. He's afraid that if an election were held today, the Palestinian Authority would lose. They don't actually have all that much power. That's how extreme the population is in these areas, which is why the problem is supremely intractable. With that said, this is why Israel is saying that they're going to have a continuing security role in Gaza after Hamas is ousted. According to the Wall Street Journal, Israel said it intends to retain security control of Gaza for an indefinite period once the war with Hamas ends, prompting U.S. officials to stress their opposition to a reoccupation of the enclave. Now, again, Israel did not want to reoccupy at all. Israel literally pulled out everyone. They took 8,000 Jews out of that area in Gush Katif and they moved them. They physically had Jews remove other Jews and take them away from the area. They've never seen, by the way, anyone in Palestinian government do anything remotely like that. Take Arabs out of one area and move them to another area purposefully in order to hand a concession to the Jews. This has never happened, ever. Israel took 8,000 Jews and moved them out of the north of the Gaza Strip, the Gush Katif area. They handed over their houses, their greenhouses, all of the infrastructure. The Palestinians promptly burned it and elected Hamas and created the greatest terror state. It's like a, it's a giant terror territory over the course of the last 20 years. So when Israel says, we have to maintain a security presence in the... Well, duh. Duh. It's the equivalent of you have the highest crime area in a city. And then you say, defund the police. So you defund the police and the murder rate goes up. And then the murders spread outside that area. And the police say, well, now we got to go back in. Is that because the police are desperate to be in that area? Or is it because the crime needs to go away? And the only way that the crime goes away is if you put law enforcement in the area. That's what Israel is talking about. The world seems to be in a state of chaos. Well, now would be a great time to invest in your safety and well-being by securing your food storage right now. Go to preparewithben.com. Start your three-month emergency food supply. My Patriot Supply is your trusted partner for emergency preparedness. They're the country's largest preparedness company. They're more than equipped to stock your shelves. Whether it's a natural disaster, sudden emergency, or unforeseen circumstances, My Patriot Supply's high-quality food storage solutions ensure you and your loved ones are always well-fed no matter what comes your way. Their best-selling three-month emergency food kit provides delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners that last up to 25 years in storage. You can even customize your supply with a mega-protein kit with real meat or options that are gluten-free. 
These kits provide over 2,000 calories every day. They are simple to prepare. Just add some water, some heat, and then eat. If you order by 3 p.m., your food kit will ship fast on the very same day with free shipping. Then you stick in the closet, you forget about it, and then, God forbid you need it, it's all ready to go. Invest in your safety and well-being. Again, go to preparewithben.com. Start your three-month emergency food supply. Go to preparewithben.com right now. That's preparewithben.com. The Ben Shapiro Show is supported by Grand Canyon University, an affordable, private, Christian university with a vibrant campus in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Ranked top 20 in the country by Niche.com, GCU is a missional, Christ-centered university that strives to foster a culture of community, giving, and impact. GCU's goal is to help you develop into a servant leader who makes a difference through finding your purpose. With 330 academic programs and over 270 online, as of June 2023, GCU integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview into your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu today. Here is Benjamin Netanyahu talking about an indefinite period of control over Gaza. Again, if, if there's any thought that Israelis are like desperate to spend blood and treasure to maintain security control over the Gaza Strip, you're out of your mind. Remember, in Israel, everyone is eligible for the draft. Every 18-year-old kid, they turn 18, they got to go to the military. You think moms and dads in Israel are desperate to send their kids into the Gaza Strip? They were so desperate not to send their kids into the Gaza Strip, they handed the damn place over to, over to Hamas. So that's not what Netanyahu's saying. But the Biden administration is like, well, maybe it's a land grab. A land grab of what? Two million Palestinian Arabs? The vast majority of whom despise the Jews and wish to see Israel destroyed by the data? In any case, here is, um, here is Netanyahu talking about what's going to have to come next. President Biden has said that it would be a mistake for Israel to occupy Gaza. Who should govern Gaza when this is over? Those who don't want to uh, continue the way of Hamas, it certainly is not... Uh, uh, I think Israel will, for uh, uh, an indefinite period, will have the overall uh, security responsibility because we've seen what happens when we don't have it. When we don't have that security responsibility, what we have is the eruption of uh, Hamas terror on a scale that we couldn't imagine. Do you have a warning to Iran, to Hezbollah? I think they've uh, understood that if they enter the war in a significant way, the response will be very, very powerful. And I hope they don't make that mistake. Okay, so again, the fact that the United States is taking that as we have to warn the Jews off of reoccupying Gaza, again, no one, except for a very select few people, actually want to have complete civilian control of the Gaza Strip, including pretty much everybody who is in Israeli government at this point in time. Why? Well, because again, the Gaza Strip, and Judea and Samaria are honeycombed with people who hate Jews. And by the way, half of them work for the UN. The UN Refugee Agency, which was set up solely for the Palestinians. It's the only agency of the United Nations that's been set up for one group of people and one group of people alone. It's the bizarre reason why cities that have been built in the Gaza Strip and have been there for 75 years are still being called refugee camps, despite the fact, like Jabalia, that they are complete and full cities. Some of the UNRWA employees, by the way, these again, these are people who literally work for the United Nations. Many of these people support terror. These people work for the UN, celebrate the Hamas massacre. For example, UNRWA teacher Asma Rafiq Kuhail, he celebrated the Hamas attack with exclamation marks and a heart emoji. UNRWA employee Mohammed Al Sheikh Ali, on October 10th, he posted, quote, anyone who tries to flee to the South should be treated the way we ought to treat traitors. And the only acceptable direction to move is east or north, which would be, by the way, into Israel. That's a Hamas invasion of Israel. Or how about the UNRWA Gaza School Administrator, Hamada Ahmed? On October 7th, he posted, quote, we welcome the great October. And then he called for ethnic cleansing of all Jews in Israel. These are people who work for the UN. <laughs> so again, the idea that Israel is going to give up control of the Gaza Strip in security terms to the United Nations is absolutely absurd. So what exactly is going to come next? Again, I think in the end, what's going to come is an Israeli military control of the Gaza Strip while they search for some local leader who will do the work of actually attempting to administer the Gaza Strip. Finding that person is not going to be easy. Again, I'm not sure the Palestinian Authority wants it. They can barely control Judea and Samaria. The Egyptians don't want it. The Jordanians don't want it. The UAE doesn't want it. The Saudis don't want it. The Europeans don't want it. The Americans don't want it. Nobody wants it. Why don't they want it? Again, it comes down to there's going to have to be a decades-long shift in the opinion structures and incentive structures of people living in the Gaza Strip so that they recognize that if they were to build their lives around, say, material prosperity and some level of religious tolerance, that their lives might be better than if they direct 
their lives and their children's lives toward the murder of every Jew in the region. That's the only way that, that anything better is going to happen. That's why when people talk about a two-state solution in the current context, it's absolutely nonsensical. It's absolutely ridiculous. With whom? With whom? You want to talk two-state solution? You're going to need a peace partner. Who exactly would that be? No, no one can answer that question because the question doesn't have an answer, unfortunately. Israel wishes it did, considering that they have now offered very generous peace deals in 1993, 2000, 2001, and 2008, and gave the entire Gaza Strip over to the Palestinians in 2005. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 